I'm sorry, Commissioner. No one can see them right now. They're both unconscious. What are their chances? 50-50. I'll call you if there's any change. Well, you won't have to call me. I'll be right on your neck. I've got to talk to one of them, either one. Nobody else saw the shooting. Yes, sir. Uh, just a moment. Here he is now. District Attorney's on the phone, sir. Oh, yes. Hello, Tom. Yes, I know. 
I know how important it is, but they're both in a coma. We've just got a death watch on our hands. Yes, of course I've got a suspect. Not even all. George Davis, an ex-convict. All right, all right, I'll call you later. You were backstage at the time of the shooting? Yes. What'd you do there? I told you I was on my way to her dressing room and I heard the shot. You're lying. You went there and shot her. You shot both of them. I didn't. We have a witness that saw you pull the trigger. I didn't shoot. All right, boys, that's enough. I want to talk to Davis alone. Killer lights. Well, how do you feel, son? How do you think I feel? It's unfortunate, but sometimes these methods are necessary. Personally, I've always found that by just sitting and chatting with an intelligent man, get the best results in the long run. She's in pretty bad shape, George. May not live. You're an ex-convict. You served three years for trying to kill a man in New Orleans. Wasn't that over Lula Bell? Yes. Many a man's been hung for simply refusing to talk, George. You ought to know that, having been a lawyer once yourself. I told you everything I know. You were really in love with Lula Bell, weren't you? Yes. How'd you get mixed up with her in the first place? I met her one night in Natchez, Mississippi. I just started law practice. I had a client, a woman who ran a boarding house. Her husband was behind his alimony, a bartender down on the waterfront in a place called the Blue Catfish. I was telling Ed he could save himself a lot of legal trouble by sending his wife five dollars a week. I don't think our lawyer ever offered to give him a break before. Pretty soon we shook hands on it. And then I turned and saw her. <laughs> to the dock. I know I heard the whistle. Think you'll need any help? No, thanks, darling. This is a man's job. Hi, you broken blossom. Look here, little Bell. What's all this about you giving me the air? The rumor you overheard is correct. You can't do it. You can't throw me over like this all of a sudden. What do you want? Two weeks' notice? But why? What have I done? You get on my nerves, that's what. Good evening. Would you like a table? No, thanks. Like a drink before you leave, Mr. Davis? Yeah, I think I will, Ed. You fixed it up for me, Molly. Five bucks a week and I'm a free man. Five bucks a week? Say, you must be quite a lawyer if you can get alimony out of him. <laughs> Listen, you're my girl. You're gonna stay my girl, do you hear? Anybody would know you were a ship captain with that mouth full of steam.
one gentleman in the place, he comes to the rescue of a lady in distress, then you rowdies want to make trouble for him. She's right. Go on, sit down, Ollie. This gentleman's a friend of mine. Get on. Clean up this mess. Ray, music, loud. Thanks, mister. It's all right. I, uh, didn't get the name. Oh, Davis. George Davis. Well, George, as somebody once said, to the victor belongs the spoils. <laughs> matter, George? Doesn't your wife ever kiss you that way? I'm not married. Not married? Big, handsome fella like you? Well, I'm, uh, I'm sort of engaged. Oh. What's her name? Pearl. <laughs> well, we certainly wouldn't want you to take this home to Pearl, would we? No, no, I'm afraid that wouldn't do. <laughs> Come on, handsome. The drinks are on me. No, thanks. I've, uh, I've got to get back to the office. I have some work to do. Work? I'm a lawyer. <laughs> the way you polished off Ralph, I'd have thought you were a fighter. Well, I've done some of that, too, at college. <sighs> nice to have met you, Miss... Lulabelle. Lulabelle, eh? Well, it's been a pleasure. Don't stay away too long. Hey, you better get ready for your next number. Yeah? The next number. I've never been so warm in my whole life. I was just out shopping, and I suddenly remembered I had a little, uh, legal business. You don't mind taking on a new client, do you? Uh, no, 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 of course not. Won't you sit down, please? Thank you. My, can't Pearl do any better than this? Your office needs a woman's touch. I like to keep it businesslike. Well, a woman can be businesslike. We could go on like this all afternoon, but it's, uh, it's warm, and I have an awful lot of work to do. Well, no wonder it's warm with the sun streaming in like this. There, that's better. Now, George, you just go ahead with your work. Don't mind me. I'll watch. Is this her picture? Yes. Here, George, you fan me while I look at it. My, she's handsome. Say what you will, sometimes a girl with those little shoe button eyes can be wickedly attractive. There I go, keeping you from your work again. You go right ahead, George. Don't mind me. Whatever case you're working on, I know you'll win. My dream book says so. Your what? My dream book. A gypsy fortune teller made it up especially for me. Would you like to look at it? Yes. Come on, sit down. Let's see. Uh, Saturday, July 10th. That's today. Yeah. A lucky day for you and all you come in contact with. Encourage new acquaintances. Transact any and all business. It will turn out profitably. George! Pearl! I'll be right down, honey. Oh, you better get out of here. But we didn't transact our business. Well, some other time, please.
Hello, Ed. Hello, Mr. Davis. What'll it be? Nothing, thanks. Just couldn't sleep. Something on your mind? Second thought, I think I'll have a beer. Hello, mister. Hello. Isn't this past your bedtime? He couldn't sleep. Well, maybe you could get Pearl to sing me a lullaby. Well, I'm in a little trouble with Pearl, thanks to you. Maybe it's just the opposite. Maybe you're off the leash. Would you people kindly move further down the bar? I'd like to have a little private talk with my lawyer. You would like to be my lawyer, wouldn't you? Frankly, uh, no. You mean you didn't come here to discuss business? Uh, no, I, um, I, as a matter of fact, I, um... Don't worry about Pearl, honey. A great big handsome fella like you shouldn't worry about anything. Hear that song? He wrote it especially for me. Yeah? Hey, stop being funny. What's being funny about going home after a hard day's work? Looks like they're closing the store on us. Staying? Yeah, I think I'll finish my beer. Well, George, since you didn't come here for anything in particular, I guess I'd better be getting on. Good night. Good night. Unless you'd care to walk me home. Well, I, uh... I guess I'm going in your direction anyway. Three days later, I saw my law practice. We were married in New Orleans. A whole new world opened up to her. Expensive clothes, finest restaurants, parties, people. We went everywhere, saw everything, and lived in the best hotel. Then our money began to run out. Just dropped the bundle right there, Butch. Oh, hello, darling. Hello, honey. You remember Butch from Natchez, don't you? He's a big fighter now. Yeah. Hiya, George. Hello, Butch. Fine thing, me the next heavyweight champ carrying packages for a woman. Butch gave me a lift home. That was very kind. Oh, think nothing of it. Always glad to be a service. Well, I guess I'll be running along. Got to take my beauty nap for the fight tonight. Goodbye, Butch. You've been an angel. So long, George. So long, gorgeous. Oh, uh, say. In case you'd like to see me in a good fight tonight, here's two for the ringside. Brady Sporting Club. Compliments of Butch Cooper. Thank you. It was such a lovely afternoon, I just couldn't resist going shopping. Look at this adorable dress. Oh. But there I go chattering about a silly old dress when my poor darling has so many problems. Did you have any luck today? Well, I was offered a job as a law clerk, three dollars a week. I declare they ought to be horsewhipped. People just don't appreciate your talent yet. No. But you'll get something. I know you will. Lula Bell, I've been thinking. This place is very nice and all that, but, but it's kind of expensive. Now, you haven't been worrying about our hotel bill again, have you? Of course I've been worrying. Then you can just put your mind at ease, because I paid it this morning. 
paid it. Oh, didn't I tell you? Butch loaned me the money. Of course, I didn't want to accept it, but he insisted, so what could I do? You could have thrown it back in his face. Now, nah, Angel, is that a way to talk? Butch is really a good friend. He's going to help me get a job singing in a cafe. Lula Bell, I don't like this whole thing. I don't like the idea of you seeing that. Oh, my goodness, George. You better hurry up and get dressed. We'll just about have time to get some dinner if we're going to see that fight. We're not going to any fight. Now, don't be ridiculous. Butch knows a lot of very influential people. He might be able to help you get started in something. You're such a worrier. Honestly, I've never seen anybody get so gloomy about little things. I can't help it, honey. I guess I'm just jealous. A butch? Oh, darling. Honey, I just can't bear to think of you even talking to another man. I know just how you feel, sugar pie. I feel the same way about my George. You ought to know that by now. time, Mr. Brady. I'm giving a little victory party at the Belmont later. Think you can make it? Well, uh, I had a date with a couple of friends, but... Uh... Bring them along, the more the merrier. Well, thanks. Well, Come on, fellas. Here's to Butch Cooper, hoping his next fight will be for the championship. Thank you. All Duke here has to do is get me the match. Little Jasper will take care of the rest. <laughs> Are you enjoying yourself, sweets? Yes. Butch tells me you won a lot of money on the fight tonight, Mr. Brady. 20,000 to be exact, and it's all right here. Is that why you keep those bodyguards right along with you? Exactly, Mrs. Davis. I'm a betting man, and I carry my business with me. So I retain Charlie and Mac to keep people from yielding to temptation. And do you ever yield to temptation, Mr. Brady? Depends on what I'm yielding to. Now, certain things, I'm considered quite a yielder. Oh, Mr. Brady. <laughs> Are you in business in New Orleans, Mr. Davis? Uh, no, George is trying to get a connection. What sort? Anything right now. I understand you've done a little fighting. Well, nothing to speak of, just amateur stuff. Well, you're pretty well put together at that. Why don't you look me up at my club tomorrow? I might be able to introduce you to a manager who might, uh... No, thanks. I'm not interested in a boxing career. Now, George, how can you say that? You might make a wonderful fighter. Especially if a man like Mr. Brady should sponsor you. <laughs> hey, George, don't rate all the attention. I'm on a dance, gorgeous. I'd be delighted. If the gentleman will excuse me. By all means. Oh, and George. You just keep on talking to Mr. Brady. You can't go wrong with a smart man like him. <laughs> 
I certainly hope Brady can do something for George. Maybe he won't have to. What do you mean? I'll tell you later. What time will you be at this club of yours tomorrow, Mr. Brady? I thought you weren't interested in fighting. I'm not. But if I'm any good, it's a job. <laughs> All right, boy. Duke here is looking for a new fighter. Let's see what you can do. All right, boys, time. I'd start him off with a fight or two out of town. All right, son, we'll work out something. Thanks, Mr. Brady. But I tell you, Lula Bell, it's a cinch. All that cash sitting right there in his pocket waiting to be plucked. The two big gorillas ready to carve the gizzard out of anybody who tries. But that's where you come in, gorgeous. Brady's taking a fancy to you. All you have to do is separate him from those two hatchet men. You can leave the rest to me and the boys. Why, Butch Cooper, that's positively dishonest. Oh, what of it? I get in the ring and knock my brains out. For what? Brady don't lift a finger and wins 20,000. Is that fair? You got big ideas, Hanson. Look, I've helped you out as much as I could, but I'm scraping bottom. Here's a chance for both of us to get fat. Are you interested or not? Of course I'm interested, Butch, darling but not for the measly thousand dollars you offered me. How much do you want? Fifty-fifty. Half for you and half for me. Okay, gorgeous, it's a deal. What a woman. Get out of here. Now, take it easy, George. Get out! Okay, smart boy. But just remember this. You're living in a nice hotel. You want to keep living in it, don't you? Lula Bell, have you gone crazy? Nah, darling, don't make a scene over nothing. Over nothing? You call a hold-up nothing? Well, Butch isn't gonna hurt him. Don't tell me you're going through with this. This is criminal. You'll be caught, they'll arrest you. Me? What for? All I'm doing is going for a little ride in Mr. Brady's carriage. Oh, you don't know what you're doing. Honey, we don't need money that badly. There's only one way to need money. That's to need it. Look, baby, we've got money. Well, that is, we soon will have. I worked out for Brady. He likes me. He's gonna get me some fights. It, it won't be much at first, but we'll be able to live. Who wants to just be able to live? I've had that. All of my life, I've had nothing else. Cheap clothes, crummy rooms, never knowing anybody worth knowing. Well, I've got something else now, and I'm not going to lose it. So is Butch. Just a cheap bruiser with a taste for champagne. Ever since we met up with him, you've been going from bad to worse. I wouldn't talk so much about Butch if I were you, darling. Not as long as he's paying our hotel bill. All right, go to Butch. Or it means nothing to me. You're no good, and you never will be any good. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> That's the way it went, time after time, a quarrel. I'd threaten to leave her, and we'd end up in each other's arms. I don't think Lula Bell wanted to be the way she was. She was just Lula Bell. We picked up a Benson dame, John. She's in your office if you want to talk to her. Oh, yes, good.
You sent for me, Commissioner? Sent for you? Well, it took us all day to run you down. Well, you might have tried the hospital. I've been there all the time. Molly, I want a line on every man who has come into Lulu Bell's life. Well, I, I guess I'll have to go back quite a little if you want everything. Back to New Orleans. George and Lula Bell had been married about six months, and I was visiting the city, see? I'd come down from Natchez, and suddenly I remembered Lula Bell. So I went over to the hotel where she lived. Who is it? It's me, honey. Molly. Molly? Creature. Oh, I'm so glad I found you. Let me look at you. Don't mind the lines under my eyes now, honey. I've aged ten years since yesterday. Well, what happened? What are you doing here? Well, I was going to be married, see? I came up here with my fiancé, the loveliest gentleman. And this morning, that dirty, thieving swine ran off with my diamond sunburst. <laughs> oh, Molly. Well, what's so funny? <laughs> Nothing, honey. You just sit down there and don't worry. You can always go back to good old Ed. Oh, no, no. Good old Ed is going back to his wife. I guess he figured he might just as well save that five bucks a week. Now, I'll suggest something else. Oh, don't look so tragic. We've always managed before, haven't we? I'll think of something. In the meantime, you can stay here with me. Oh, yes, yes. George will love that, won't he? <laughs> Say, how is George? Oh, George is fine. He's out of town for a few days. Ah, uh, on a law case? No, he's become a fighter. Ah, uh, I see. George Davis a fighter? Uh-huh. Well, I never... Answer that, will you, Molly? Mr. and Mrs. George Davis's... Sweet. Who? Brady? Is it Mr. Brady in the lobby? Tell him I'll be right down. Mrs. Davis will be right down. Brady. Brady. Now, that name sounds familiar. Not Mark Brady. Why not? Well, say. How does George feel about all this? George? Why should George feel one way or another? Mr. Brady is just a friend. A friend of us both. As a matter of fact, he's taken George under his wing. Oh, yes. Yes, I can see that. <laughs> there. How do I look? Lovely. And like the kind of a girl who might listen to reason. <laughs> That's the idea, isn't it? Don't be ridiculous, darling. Mr. Brady doesn't interest me in the least. This is strictly business. <laughs> Any of my business? Not at the moment, darling. Now, you just make yourself at home. I'll see you later. Oh, don't you worry about me. I won't be long. <laughs> Goodbye, honey. Thank you very much, Mr. Brady. Good night. <laughs> and now, where to? Well, you said you were going to show me the town. Where'd you like to go? To the Irish Channel. There's a place down there I've just been dying to see. What place is that? I think it's called, um, Murphy's or... Murray's. Murray's? That's an absinthe joint. Uh-huh. You sure you want to hit that low? With anybody else, I'd be a little scared. But with you, Mr. Brady, I'm ready for anything. Murray's it is, then. My aim tonight is to make you very happy, Lulu Bell. You could make me a lot happier. How? Well, I'm not exactly shy, but I do have certain objections to people looking over my shoulder when I'm trying to make a good impression on a man. Huh? Oh. Run along home, boy. I'll take the carriage from here. Thank you, Mr. Brady. You're one of the most thoughtful men I've ever met. Well, there's a reason. What's that? You're one of the most exciting women I've ever met. <laughs> They'll be here any second. Now remember, no rough stuff unless you have to. One drink ought to do it. 
Sure, boss. We know. Come on, give me my two. Two absent threat pays. Yes. Goodness, what evil looking characters. What goes on here besides drinking? Robbery, skullduggery, and a smattering of homicide. <laughs> oh, straight up, babe. Cheap, short, change your gear. Take your hand over me and give me. It's sure nice to be with a man like you, Mr. Brady. You're so calm and reassuring. Any reason why I shouldn't be calm? No. No, of course not. But you said yourself that anything could happen here. My, what a pretty ring. It's an early acquisition. I won it from a man who couldn't pay off on a horse race. I've always wanted to wear a real diamond. I have a hunch you'll be wearing lots of them once you've learned how to be smart. Smart? You're clever, Lulu Bell. Clever and unscrupulous. But you're not smart. You don't know the difference between money in the hand and money in the bank. Now, this is money in the hand, but I have a lot of money in the bank. If someone were to take this from me, I'd be upset, but far from broke. I don't follow you, Mr. Brady. Well, let me put it this way. I have a building in town, and I'm converting the lower floor into a club room and casino. I want to put in some entertainment. How would you like to be featured? Me? Your voice says... Just the quality that I want. Well, Mr. Brady, it would be wonderful, but why pick on a nobody? You won't be a nobody for long. You've got too much drive for that. You're going to get just what you want. And I'd like to be around when you get it. Shall we drink to our association? Here's to a long and successful friendship. May we trust each other always, implicitly, just as we do tonight. What's the matter? This place gives me the creeps. Let's get out of here. Just as you wish. Thank you, boys. I'm glad you changed your mind, my dear. I'd have hated for the boys to muss up Butch Cooper. He can still make us a lot of money. I haven't had a chance to talk with you, kid. How did you make out in Mobile? Won a couple. Lost a couple. Well, you can't win all the time. Make yourself at home. That's not a good idea to train on whiskey, though. You really ought to be in bed. He's right about one thing, George. You shouldn't drink so much. What's the difference, Molly? Fifteen or twenty bucks a fight. I can't even pay our rent. Oh, that's almost the end of a number, George. I guess I better go. Excuse me. 
I'm telling you here. If I ever lost you. How was that? Wonderful, honey, just wonderful. George is here. Oh? you hide in the closet and jump out. It's always a bigger laugh. I didn't come in for laughs. No? No, I came in for a little heart-to-heart -heart talk. I can take a hint. Fire away. I thought you agreed to keep George out of here. What do you want me to do? Lock him up at home in my trunk? Lulu Bell, you're going up. You're getting someplace. Having him around is bad for you. It's bad for business. Anyway, I understood you were going to get rid of him. Well, you understood wrong. Maybe I don't want to get rid of him. Maybe in my own peculiar way, I, I'm still in love with him. You in love with that second-rate tanker? Oh, don't make me laugh, honey. We're going to be together for a long time, you and I. Play your cards right. And anything I have can be yours. Do I make myself clear? Too clear. Get out. All right. All right, I can wait. Not forever. Mull that over in your spare time. He won't. Nothing. Well, that's a new name for it, at least. Oh, Lula Bell, honey, listen to me. I've made too many mistakes in my life to ever be telling anybody else what to do. But don't you think you ought to make up your mind? About what? About George, mostly. You too? Yes, but for a different reason. George has been fighting now for how long? What do you know he hasn't made as much in six months as you make in a week? What are you getting at? In a little while, he'll be fighting main events. He's going places. Oh, no, he isn't. No, Lula Bell, no, no, no. Do you remember the first time George walked into the catfish and talked to Ed into paying five bucks a week alimony? Oh, he was well liked in Natchez there, George. He was a lawyer, and he was going to be a big lawyer. He even had an office of his own. And he was engaged to a nice, dull girl who'd don his socks and cook his supper for him. Oh, he wasn't cut out to be a fighter. He never was, he never will be one. Why, in six months or a year, he'll have cauliflower ears. And a broken nose, maybe. And in another two years, he won't even be able to read a law book. Leave me alone. George is perfectly happy. Oh, yes. Well, I just left him. You go on out there and take a look at him. Why don't people stop meddling in my personal affairs? Uh, Hello, darling. Molly told me you were here. You're looking more beautiful than ever. My makeup. Oh. Yeah, sure. The reason I came here, honey, was we haven't been seeing much of each other lately, and I thought after you're through here, we could have dinner together. Oh, George, it'll be so late. 
Yeah. I see. You'd rather I didn't come here, wouldn't you? No, darling. It isn't that. It's just that, well, it must get awful dull for you to be sitting around here while I... Okay, honey. I'm sorry. I don't want to bother you. I'll see you when you get home. George, wait. Sit down. George, why don't you go back to Natchez? What? I mean it. You're... You're just in my way around here. You're not serious. Dead serious. After all, you'll be a lot better off without me, and... I want to lead my own life. So let's just call it quits. Sensible, isn't it? Who is it this time? Brady? I said, is it Brady? I knew something like this would happen if I left you alone. It is Brady. Come on, we're going home. Lula Bell, I'm gonna get you away from here if it's the last thing I do. All right, bud. I of course, you thought you could win that Birmingham fight in one round. What happened? Oh, the guy was made of rubber. Every time I knocked him down, he bounced back up again. <laughs> well, but isn't the little night blooming Jasmine in person? Hi, you chump. You still around? Well, what's the matter? Am I button in or something? Yes. Of course not, handsome. Don't pay any attention to George. He's just leaving for Natchez. Am I? I'm not going to Natchez or anywhere else. I'm taking you home. Not so fast, chump. I don't think the lady wants to go home. You keep out of this. Oh, hey, take it easy, oh, chump. Oh, take it easy, take it easy. You got a big fight next week. For heaven's sake, don't act like a fool. Okay. This is sure your lucky day, mister. Come on, Butch, let's go. Okay. It's all over, folks. Champagne for everybody, Mac. Compliments of Butch Cooper. <laughs> Wait a minute, gorgeous. How about a dance? I'll be out in a minute. Can't I trust you a second? It's not really my fault, Ma. I just stopped to talk for a minute before I knew it. They before were... you know it, you almost cost me a quarter of a million dollars. I've got a fortune tied up in Butch's fight next week. If anything happens to him, I'm sunk. Mr. Brady. Yes, Charles. Mr. Randolph and his party just came in. Thank you. You're out of place here. I advise you to leave. Come on, George. Sit. Well, well, Harry Randolph. Hello, Mark. Haven't seen you since the Corbett Sullivan fight. You know my wife? How do you do? It's Miss and Mrs. Wilde. How do you do? We came to hear this new singer everyone's talking about. We hear she's very beautiful. Lulu Bell? The last show doesn't go on till 11.30. But I'll ask you to do a number. Ace in the hole? I'm sure she'll be delighted. Hey, look, how about that dance? Butch, go away and leave me alone, will you? I've changed my mind. What is this? First we dance and then we don't dance. Am I in or am I out? You're out. Some other time, Butch. So you finally got rid of George. You'll never regret it, I promise you. Tonight, after we close, we'll... Talk things over. We'll celebrate. Just the two of us. Meanwhile, I'd like to ask a favor. Will you sing an extra song for an old friend? That new party on the floor, that's Harry Randolph. Big spender. Owns a couple of railroads, half of New York. This town is full of guys who 
think they're awful wise just because they know a thing or two. You'll meet them night and day, strolling up and down Broadway, telling of the wonders they can do. The gamblers and the bookies keep looking for the rookies who congregate around the metropole. They wear flashy ties and collars, but the way they get their dollars, they've all got an ace in the hole. Some of them send to their old folks for coin. That is their ace in the hole. Others have friends in the old tenderloin. That is their ace in the hole. They boast of their jewels, how they've outsmarted fools, as if money were life's only goal. But when they're out of stock, they'd go right back in hot if they lost that old ace in the hole. Yes, if they lost that old ace in the hole. Well, I'd like you to meet an old and dear friend, Harry Randolph. We've met. You have? While I was singing. What charming candor. It was worth my trip to New Orleans. Won't you join us for a moment, Miss Lulabelle? I'd love to. Oh, uh, uh, may I present my wife? How do you do? How do you do? And uh, Mr. and Mrs. Wilde. How do you do? How do you do? After hearing you tonight, the Wilds should be coming back often. What about you? Mrs. Randolph and I are leaving for New York tomorrow morning. Yes, and much as I hate to put an end to this very charming evening, I really think we ought to be going. We have a lot of packing to do. Uh, darling, uh, why don't you run along with Tom and Alice? I think I'll hang around and play a little roulette. I haven't forgotten little Butch, have you, gorgeous? We never got to have our dance. Oh, of course. Uh, a protege of Mr. Brady's. Butch is going to be the next heavyweight champion of the world. He'll tell you so himself. Now that you're getting rid of George, you'll find out what it's like to have a real man around. You? Well, I don't want to blow my own horn, but... Uh... When you'll be along later, Harry? Yes, I won't be long. Butch, honey, these slippers are just killing me. Would you mind if I go in and change them? Oh, sure, okay. Make it kind of snappy, huh? We got things to talk about. You wait for me at the bar. I'll be right out. <laughs> oh, have a drink on me, chump. You'll be leaving town soon, huh? Why don't you go fall down dead or something? <laughs> Hey, waiter. Uh... What happened to your friends? They left. Ms. Randolph, too? She was tired. With a distinguished-looking husband like you, she certainly doesn't keep very close tabs. My wife and I have an understanding. She knows I like to gamble. Not doing so well, are you, champ?
Mind a personal question, little Bell? Why not at all? What are you doing here? I work here. Yes, I know. You interest me very much. Really? What a strange coincidence. Because from the moment you came in, you interested me very much. You know, most millionaires are just rich old men. You're different. With your talent, you should be in New York. Why, Mr. Randolph, what would a little country girl like me be doing in a big city like New York? You'd have the town at your feet. I'm not exactly without connections on Broadway. And if the idea interests you at all, I'm sure that something could be arranged. Why, Mr. Randolph, I... I don't know what to say. I really don't. Come on, champ. Let's go home and get some sleep, huh? Go away, pal. I told you I had a date. Of course, the lady has a boyfriend. They say he's very tough. Lay off, will you, Butch? Don't you ever give up. <laughs> You'll be run out of town. Take it easy, but you don't get any dope for this. This is one fight I don't have to get paid for. Use your head, champ. Get those tables back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this cheap ham and egger needs a boxing lesson, and I'm going to give him one free of charge with one hand behind my back. <laughs> So frisky now, huh, chump? <laughs> Look out! You got two hands, why don't you use them? Okay, chump. Maybe I underrated you. George was gone. He disappeared completely. Lula Bell did everything she could to find him. She looked everywhere. You see, she wanted to help him. Yes, I imagine. Oh, you cops are all alike. You just don't understand women. Not at all. All right, she couldn't find him, so she came to New York with Harry Randolph. Yes. Then Butch Cooper and Brady and George all showed up. Well, not all at once. I know. I also know that Randolph made her the biggest star on Broadway. Even built a theater for her. But just when did she start seeing George Davis again? Well, that was only a few days ago. I think Lula Bell must have felt he was in town. She was so nervous and irritable. And she just talked about him all the time. And then, one night... Good evening, mademoiselle. Good evening, Pierre. Monsieur Randolph. Good night, honey. Sleep tight, darling. I won't be mysterious. Harry. You like it? Oh, I, I'm overcome. Oh, you 
You've been working hard all season. Thought you might like something to remember the show by. Oh, it's magnificent, Harry. I don't know how I can ever thank you. There's also something else. I spent the afternoon with my attorneys. Mrs. Randolph has finally consented to give me a divorce. Oh? I want you to marry me, little Bill. We can spend our honeymoon in France, Italy, anywhere you like. I can arrange my affairs so we can be gone a year. Or be indefinitely, if you want to stay. You don't appear very excited. Oh, of course I'm excited, Harry. I'm not only excited, I'm very flattered, but... there are so many things to think about. For instance? Well... The show. That's all taken care of. Get someone for your part. From now on, your career will be as Mrs. Harry Randolph. You do want to marry me, don't you? Oh, of course I do, Harry. But... But what? Well, I... Oh. I guess I failed to take one thing into consideration. What's that? Well, I didn't realize that becoming Mrs. Harry Randolph would take such an effort on your part. Oh, it isn't that. Could all this have any connection with the fact that George Davis is in town? George? Yes. Your ex-husband, remember? Don't be ridiculous. George doesn't mean anything to me, no matter where he is. Oh, Harry, don't badger me. Tired, aren't you? Yes, I am tired. You get a good night's rest. See you tomorrow. Perhaps we can have lunch together. I'll call you. No, I... I'll call you. Very well. Harry, thanks for everything. You're very sweet. Good night. Good night. Where's Mr. Big? Mm, mm, ain't that something? <gasps> Simply blinding. Oh, yes. Golly. Oh, must have cost a fortune. Molly, we've got to find George. Oh, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, honey. It's very late. I know, I know. Get me the telephone book. We'll call every hotel in town. Don't you think you ought to let bygones be bygones? Molly, I must see him. I've got to see him. Oh, well, all right. Here, here, let me. Dear. Sometimes I wonder if you know when you are well off. Well, good evening, Mr. Davis. Hello, Henry. We made those train reservations for you. Thanks. Hello, George. I... I thought you'd never come. What are you doing here? I want to talk to you. Come on, sit down. Look, I've got to get packed. You're not leaving? Yes. When? Where to? I'm going home to Natchez. First thing in the morning. But, George, you can't go without... There's someone I've got to meet, and I'm late. You're bitter. I can see you. Bitter? No, I'm not bitter. Two years running away from the police. Three years in prison. I'm so terribly sorry, George, but that's all in the past. I want to help you, won't you let me? You've helped me plenty already by getting a divorce. I know I've done a lot of things wrong, terribly wrong. That's why I'm here. I've only an hour before the show, but I must talk to you. I told you I have an engagement. Tonight, then, after the show. 
Just a half an hour. Come to my apartment, the Park Plaza. Please, George. Please say you'll come. All right, I'll be there. You won't forget the Park Plaza. I said I'd be there. You're handsomer, George. That touch of gray gives you a distinguished look. Thanks. I'll send you the first ones that fall out. Molly, I've waited five years for just one man, and I didn't realize it until now. Well, I don't like it. I just got a feeling. You know what that dream book said? Oh. That thing. <laughs> Funny how I used to fall for this. Thursday, March 15. Make no plans on this day. See only old friends. Well, George is an old friend, isn't he? <laughs> what is it? What does it say? Imagine this. Friday. March 16. That's tomorrow. Your unlucky day. Tragedy stalks for you in these hours. Oh, Lola Bell, I wish you wouldn't see him. I just got a feeling. Oh, bother your feelings, Molly. I've waited a long time for this. You run along now and don't worry. Only nice things are going to happen from here on. Well, I sure hope you're right. Will that be all, mademoiselle? Yes, Pierre. Oh, Pierre, would you put the lights out, please? Oui, mademoiselle. And Pierre, you may take the night off. I'll manage. Merci, mademoiselle. Hello, gorgeous. Where did you come from? Friend of yours sent me. George Davis. Uh, don't worry about the clothes. I'm getting a whole new outfit tomorrow. Heart of gold George has. What do you want? There's no way to talk to an old pal, gorgeous. Well, I see you're in the chips as usual. Mind if I pour a drink? Real McCoy, huh? Well, here we are again, just like old times. Butch. I'll have to ask you to leave. Don't rush me, gorgeous. George said you'd be glad to see me. Well, I am, but uh, come to the theater tomorrow. You used to call me handsome. All right. Good night, handsome. That's more like it. I knew there was a soft spot in your heart for old Butch. <laughs> Dirty you can't do that to me. Nobody can do that to me. You better leave before the police come. Here. Oh, kill her. Take it easy, bud. Well, I'll have to call the cops. We've been watching you ever since you came oh, in kill here. Her. Kill her. Uh, cigarette? No, thank you. I never smoke. But if you should happen to have just a little. You know, it's been a try and ordeal. Thank you, sir. And 
Uh, what about Mark Brady? Well, isn't it odd now that you should mention Mr. Brady? You know, I saw him just recently. Oh, my, how that man has changed. He used to be quite a figure back in New Orleans. Yes, quite a spender. I'm afraid I'm not interested in that broken down club of yours. But you told me to go ahead. I'm not planning on doing anything for at least six months, maybe longer. I'm going away. You promised me. I went ahead and made plans on your promise. I redecorated the place, signed people. All right, get your money back. I've changed my mind. Lulu Bell, I wouldn't be here if it weren't urgent. I need your help, desperately. Every penny I have in the world is tied up in the place. If I don't open, I'm sunk. Sign this contract. Your name on it is enough to keep me going. I can get the backing I need and stay open. What am I supposed to do? Cry over every tin horn gambler who steps out of line? You don't even belong in New York. But you owe it to me. I don't owe anybody anything. As a favor, then. I gave you your start. Do you remember that? Sign it and we're quits. All right, Mark. Leave it. Come back after the show. I've got to have it tonight. I told you I'd think it over. Don't fail me. Didn't I tell you to keep him out of here? Well, I... I... Oh, Molly, I'm so sorry. I'm just all mixed up. Oh. I know I've lost him. I wouldn't be too sure about that. I just saw him out front buying a ticket. George? Mm -hmm. Fifteen minutes, Miss Lulabelle. They want you now. Go on, go on, go on. He was sitting right down. Yeah, go on, take your bath. George. Why did you do it, George? Why did you send Butch last night? I thought you might like to meet an old acquaintance. You said you'd come yourself. You promised you would. Let's not stand out here where people can stare at us. Let's go into my dressing room. 
please. George. Please, George, don't go away now that we've found each other again. There's never been anyone else for me. There never will be. Look, Lula Bell, what could you possibly want with me? You've got your career, plenty of money. As a matter of fact, you've got everything you've ever wanted. Now, what's the catch? Catch? Yeah. If I know my Lula Bell, there's always an angle in that scheming little head of hers. What is it this time? First there was Butch, then Brady, then Randolph. I can't give you anything like this. Or this. Lula Bell, I've got nothing to offer you. What do you expect of me? George, it's taken me all these years to find out how wrong I've been. I know now that it's you I want. I love you, George. What about Randolph? I don't love him. I never have. Let's go back to Natchez together. Let's go anywhere together. We can leave tonight after the show. Hold me, darling. Close. Just pack a couple of things for the trip, Molly. You can send the rest down to me later. Oh, dear me. Someday I'll figure out how to keep up with you. One day you're going to Paris, the next you're going All to the right. other. All right, now hurry up. Just pack a couple of dresses and some shoes. I'll leave a note for Harry. Going somewhere? Harry. I have an aversion to notes being left me. Do you mind telling me in your own simple words just what's happening? I'm going away with George. I'm awfully sorry, Harry. I'm terribly grateful to you. And I'll... I know. You'll always be fond of me. My dear, I've devoted a number of years of my life to you. You mean more to me than anything in the world. I'm divorcing my wife for you. If you're leaving with anyone, you're leaving with me. I'm not one of your railroads, Harry. You don't own me. I'm leaving and I... I don't see that there's anything you can do about it. I know he's young and tall and handsome. But think twice. Lula Bell in Natchez in a cottage. I'm afraid, my dear, that a gingham dress won't take the place of ermine. Not anymore. And you'll miss the chauffeurs and the limousines and the diamonds. Just too late to go back. So you'll not leave with George Davis. Remember that. I'll uh, be waiting for you at the theater, as usual. Bell. Please, Mark, I have a show to do. I had to see you now. I've got to know. I'm sorry, Mark, but there isn't a chance. But you, you can't refuse me. The answer is no. Please, Mark, don't bother me. Just a minute. Honey, I got George on the phone for you. Hello? Oh, George, I'm so glad I caught you before you left. Don't come to the theater for me. I'll tell you later. 
Oh, no, darling, I haven't changed my mind. I'll meet you at your hotel. I see. Randolph, huh? Don't be silly. It's just that I don't want any unpleasantness or embarrassment. Please do as I ask, just this once. All right. Goodbye. Take care of those bags for a while and call me a taxi. Yes, sir. change your mind. Oh, Harry, I wish you wouldn't make it all so grim. After all, men have had this happen to them before. Can't we just part friends? There's no friendliness in me, nothing but a lot of emotion that you wouldn't understand. I can't let you go, Lulabelle. Oh, Harry, must we go through this again? Can't you understand, darling? I love you. How about Randolph? Sorry, Commissioner. The man's had two transfusions. He's slipping very fast. Any news? We were lucky. We grab Butch Cooper and Brady. Give me one minute, Doctor. Even half a minute. I won't even ask him to talk. All he has to do is identify one person. Where are they? Waiting outside. Randolph is the only one who knows. The only one. Well... Bring him in. All right, Commissioner. Mr. Randolph. Mr. Randolph. Why can't you leave him alone? I'm sorry, Mrs. Randolph. We'll be as brief as we can. It's against all decency, torturing a dying man like this. Try to concentrate, Mr. Randolph. The party who shot you last night is here in this room, here beside your bed. I want to know who it was. Was it Mark? Brady? Molly Benson? Butch Cooper? Was it George Davis? Who was it, Mr. Randolph? Who shot you? What did he say? What did he say? I'm his wife. I have a right to know what he said. Where were you last night, Mrs. Randolph? I said, where were you last night? Why, I was at home. You were not at home, Mrs. Randolph. The hospital tried to reach you three times. Your maid said you left the house at 10 o'clock. You didn't return until after one. Where were you? I've told you I was at home. You were in the theater last night, Mrs. Randolph, weren't you? He said that I did it, didn't he? He said that, didn't he? <sighs> well, Mrs. Randolph, didn't you? Oh, and I... I did it. But I didn't mean to kill him. I loved him. Let's go, Mrs. Randolph.
Well, George, looks like you're a free man. Thanks. That's her room. She's been calling for you. You can go in if you like. Is she going to be all right? Lulabelle? Yes, yeah, sure, she's going to be all right. Good luck. Thanks, Commissioner.